Hi, this is Tara Green and I'm here to do my annual 2015 preview using tarot cards for each month of the year. Now, 2015, when you add it up and reduce it neurologically, is the number 8. And the number 8 in the tarot is a very, very complicated symbol. So all of the symbols of the tarot will apply to this year. Mainly, when you turn the number 8 on its side, it becomes infinity. So, the symbol of infinity is the symbol of karma. So, I believe that 2015 is a very important year in terms of maintaining balance, realizing that everything we do has karmic consequences. I think that 2015 will be a huge year of change. Today is the day of the sixth Uranus-Pluto square. So, we have one more to go. That's on March 16th, 2015, to end this cycle that started in 2012. So this is a major evolutionary shift. Today, tomorrow, we go into the sixth ray, the third eye activation. So it's very important for people to stay conscious. Uh, for a lot of people, I think going into 2015 with their third eye activated could be a little bit scary uh, to suddenly um, have that sense of intuition of higher knowledge being activated. It's really important for light workers and for people who have been consciously doing the work to meditate, to stay very clear. We're invoking the lavender ray, the purple ray, it's Saint Germain. We're working with Metatron, so we're bringing down the higher energies. Okay, the solar logos. Alright, so the number eight. The number eight is associated with the symbol of 17, the star, which is the symbol of Aquarius. It's also associated with strength which is Leo, and it's associated with Libra, justice. Okay, so I'm shuffling my cards. Every time I shuffle my cards, I use my special Perkimer Diamond Crystal, and I invoke my higher guides, my guardian angels, to come in to the cards and into my heart. So I clear my cards before I start. I shuffle with my left hand. I make sure both my feet are on the floor. Activating the purple ray. What is 2015 going to be like? Right. And then I divide them three times. And I put them back together. Okay. So January 2015. Oh, the wishing card. Oh, well that's very nice. Okay. So that is the Nine of Cups. The wishing card is always that sense of, for every good deed that we put out, nine come back. You know, there's a law of nines in Wiccan, Pagan. If you do good things, it'll be multiplied nine times. So, be very careful what you wish for, because the universe will magnify that. I believe that this is really connected to that sense of activating the violet flame. Okay, so very good. So January, so February, we have the Four of Cups. So this is completing and finishing relationships. Emotional issues that we've been carrying forward. It's like uh, Venus and Aries, so it's a new beginning. New beginning in initiations of the heart. So then March, when we get to March, we have the Queen of Swords. So she is like the symbol of Libra. So March is when we have the seventh and the last, the final exact Uranus Pluto square, which will activate everyone's crown chakra. This represents taking off the masks, the personas, the, the false images that we've projected out, that we've carried. So people will start to become much more real. They will see reality for what it is. Reality being a relative term, of course. So, April, we have the Wheel of Fortune. Now, Jupiter. The Wheel of Fortune, number 10, is like the planet Jupiter. And Jupiter is in Leo this year. It will be moving into Virgo in September, so it's very expansive, people's hearts loom large, it's a time to have courage, to be daring, to move forward, to have trust, to have faith. Okay, when we get to May, we've got the Princess of Cups. Now, the princesses are always about the manifestation of whatever element they're in, so the Princess of Cups is really, especially when she appears with the wishing card there, Again, be very, very clear. Every thought you think, every emotion you have will instantly manifest. Okay, so let me get to June. In June we have the card of the Six of Discs. So the Six of Discs is literally very positive, 
uh, elementally. So in some sense this is about, I believe because the issue is about ecology, um, about earth changes, about carbon emissions, all of that is going to be first and foremost as everybody sees the climate going totally crazy that we're going to have to start doing something about it. And this will be a more of an earnest collective journey. Okay. Okay, so now we get to July. July is the ace of discs. So the aces are the most powerful energies. They have all of the potential. These are like the acorns. So the acorn, the full potential of everything manifesting on the physical plane in July. So this would be a sense of kind of collectively a new vision, a new sense of strength, of power, a new sense of the earth. So then in August, we get the Prince of Discs. So Prince of Discs is like the symbol of Taurus. Again, very earthy, very sensuous, very much about appreciating the earth, about appreciating the simple things in life. Uh, it's about creativity. It's about harvesting. It's about, again, we're in this sense of karma overall. You know, what we've reaped is, what we've sown is what we're going to reap. So, much more focus. Now we get to... September. So September is a big shift time this year. The planet Saturn has, is going to enter Sagittarius in December of 2014 and finally enter Sag in September till 2017. And here we have the symbol of the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is, again, like Taurus. So again, there's a lot of sense of working with the Earth, appreciating the Earth, making real physical manifestation changes. So this is, again, the symbol of Saturn is always the tester limitations, obstacles. So we were all going to be karmically tested to tell the truth. So the, the symbol of the Hierophant, or the Pope, uh, could be some major shifts for Catholicism. Uh, this new Pope, Francis, is very forward-thinking. Um, also the sense of women. The higher uh, element of the Hierophant in the deck I use, the Toth Tarot, is that women need to come fully forward and speak their truth. And all of this Taurus Earth energy is about women ascending women standing up and speaking their truth and gaining more power. So then in October we have the Princess of Wands. So this is the second princess that's shown up. She represents total freedom from fear, absolute courage to jump into a whole new world, a whole new sense of spirit. Okay, November. In November we get the Knight of Disc. So again, lots of earth energy showing up here. Uh, the Knight of Disc is, again, like the sign of Virgo. The Knight of Disc is about seeing what we've planted, what we've harvested, and that there is the light at the end of the tunnel, that there is the grass is greener somewhere else, that we're looking forward to a more positive future. So this is good. Now, the card of December is the card of the moon. Now, the moon is a very powerful card. There's only been three major cards showing up out of 12 here. So the moon is like the symbol of Pisces. Um, for everybody, the, the planet Neptune, the ruler of Pisces, is in its own sign. So again, there's this sense of everybody's inner sense, their psychic vision, the sense of everybody being telepathically connected is really going to awake, and that can engender a lot of fear. So the moon is about the dark side of the moon. It is about the unconscious coming forward and manifesting. It is about a rebirth, though. So it is very powerful people turning to spirit, but spirit within, not, not organized religions, but the internal sense of being connected to spirit deep down. So again, it's faith, it's trust. Jupiter will be in Virgo at that point. All of this earthy cards, I think, points to that as well. It'll be frugal. Things will be frugal. People will be changing their consciousness to really paying attention to being grateful for what they do have and learning to have less and to learning to value the real physical real things in life, not so much, this is not about techno technological um, friendships, it's about real physical manifestation. So, I believe that this is a big turning point this year, 2015, what you create, what you think, what you put out there is what you're going to manifest, so everybody needs to be very conscious in the now. The number eight is the symbol of enlightenment. To be enlightened means to be fully present and conscious in the now, like Eckhart Tolle mentioned. So I just thought, uh, after I've gone through all of the cards, which I've done very spontaneously here for 2015, that we have an extra card, a helper card, a guidance card. So again, I'm just going to shuffle the cards again. 
and ask for the guidance. All right, so, oh, we get the card of death. Okay. Now I know when most people see the death card, of course, they get very afraid. But the death card is actually very good and very positive. Again, this is the harbinger of change. As the world is being torn apart to be rebuilt right now, we are entering the age of Aquarius. That's also what the number eight means. So the death card is about embracing change. I know these Uranus-Pluto squares for different generations have been really raised, you know, creating a lot of havoc in people's lives. A lot of people have lost everything, but sometimes we need to go through a personal death and change. That's how all shamans get their power. So embracing death, we have to change the old order to give birth to the new. So it's also about power, about control, about sex, about money, about transformation. So all of this, surrendering to death, everything has to die to be reborn. I'm wishing you all a very happy, very positive 2015. I'm here to guide you through your journey. We still have, I believe that these last Uranus-Pluto squares are going to be the most powerful, especially the one in March, because both those planets are moving direct, which they haven't done till now. So full speed ahead, we're going into the unknown. Embrace the unknown, embrace the chaos, embrace the change. We are creating a brand new heaven on Earth. Thank you so much. Blessings.